Are ancient oceans polluting the atmospheres of dead stars? The search for signs of life beyond Earth is never ending. There are obvious things to look for based on our idea of what life needs. Things like water, oxygen, methane and carbon dioxide are all not only important components of planetary habitability, they are also, on Earth at least, closely tied in with the presence of life. Therefore, we look for these on exoplanets in the hope of one day finding alien life. Science is very rarely as simple as that though, and with astrobiology sometimes it's a matter of not seeing a bioindicator directly, because so far we haven't. Part of doing a little educated guesswork, sometimes hopeful possibilities turn up in some really unexpected places. A white dwarf star is a strange class of object and fairly rare in the universe. What is it? A typical star such as our own sun spends most of its lifetime producing heat and light from the process of fusion of hydrogen. As it ages, its supply of hydrogen diminishes and fusion of heavy elements begins. Eventually, fusion within the star stops as it begins to fuse iron. At this point, the outward pressure produced by fusion no longer counteracts the force of gravity, and the star implodes, destroying itself in a tremendous explosion called a supernova. A white dwarf star forms when a star in the red giant phase of its life cycle sheds its outer layers leaving behind an inert object composed often of carbon and oxygen. A white dwarf is very compact and dense, with gravity 350,000 times that on Earth. And all of this is packed into an object roughly the size of a small city. So yeah, white dwarfs are oddballs. How are they useful to astrobiologists though? In a recent video, I spoke of how researchers may be able to glean information about exoplanet composition using spectroscopic analysis to examine impact ejector. This same principle has already been employed with debris orbiting the white dwarf star SDSSJI1043 plus 0855. Again with the names. Despite the fact that white dwarfs are essentially dead stars, many have been observed with clouds of debris and dust around them. It's likely that this debris is the remains of the White Dwarf's former solar system. With the sudden change in status of their parent star, with resulting changes in gravity, orbits may decay or falter. Many of these planets have fallen apart and have become clouds of dust. This material has been observed transiting many White Dwarf stars. Often it's drawn towards the star and pollutes it. It turns out that SDSSJI1043 plus 0855, from now on I'll just call it Rufus. It turns out that Rufus is encircled by a cloud of fragments and dust, much of which is trapped in its upper atmosphere. In 2016, observers at the University of Montreal, Canada, found that Rufus is accreting the outer layers of a large rocky object, which appears to be differentiated much like Earth or Ganymede. On a daily basis, they were able to see changes in the composition of this material in the white dwarf's atmosphere. The findings were exciting. Large amounts of carbon, in addition to calcium and oxygen. Sounds pretty dull, right? But here on Earth, that combination of elements often manifests as calcium carbonate, which is the main component of limestone. Limestone is a mineral formed from the remains of shelled organisms which produce their shells from calcium carbonate. What does that mean? Is there a limestone encrusted world breaking up in a decaying orbit and crumbling down towards oblivion? Was this now dead world home to some form of life that also employs calcium carbonate as clans and muscles do here on Earth? Obviously this find warrants a closer look and future observations with the James Webb Space Telescope could confirm the presence of calcium carbonate. 
but in the spirit of not jumping to conclusions, calcium carbonate can also have non-biological origins. But there is definitely reason to examine this system further, and others like it. Again, this kind of finding also chimes in with the concept in my impacts video of using dust and debris from impacts to determine exoplanet composition. We can't really see them clearly yet, but now we can see inside them. That could yield even more information about the presence of life. I'm a space nerd and a science nerd. I work in a factory, but this is what I do, bringing you to the universe of plain human. If you like the idea of a living universe, join me and subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it with all of your friends, even other people's friends. I'll see you next time.